Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. It's time to take a look at another GoBot review. We're going to be doing a Super GoBot this time around, and I figured I'd pick probably one of the hardest and rarest, most difficult one to find. Or at least one of them. This is the 1986 Renegade Night Fright. Now, Night Fright made, uh, was released in 1986, right at the very end of the line for the GoBots. So as such, he was not seen in a lot of stores, if at all in most cases. It's said that he's a very rare toy to be found in Europe, but there's also reports that state that there are only 10 of these toys in existence. Now, whether or not that's true, I can't exactly say. Sorry for kicking the tripod here. But, I do know he is somewhat on the expensive side. I got a brand new sample here, and he did set me back about $300. So, expensive, yes. Super rare, especially in the 10 available. That I'm finding a little hard to swallow. Because if there was only that many, I wouldn't have been surprised if there would have been another zero added to the price I paid for this toy. But, at any rate, let's take a further look into Night Fright. Night Fright did actually make an appearance in the GoBots cartoon, but he was colored green instead of tan, and he was called Blades for some reason. I guess Hanna-Barbera probably thought that that was a less scary name, or that would have been the toy's original prototype name, but they ended up dropping it due to the fact that at that same time, the Transformers had a character named Blades. So the name was likely changed for the toy's release, but not changed in enough time to have it changed for the cartoon. As for articulation-wise, Night Fright does have a joint at his shoulders. It does allow them to rotate all the way. We shift the tail fin aside, and can it go? Nope, it doesn't go all the way back. Uh, it's this extra plastic here that keeps him from going the full 360 degrees, but he does get quite a range of motion with his arms. He does have a joint at his hip. So it does allow the leg to bend like so. And he has a joint at the ankle. So he's pretty well jointed. Not as good as some of his predecessors, but it's not too bad considering. Now let's convert Night Fright into his alternate mode. To do so, first we would fold his head down like so. And then you fold down his feet, like so. Fold them down all the way, get them all the way folded under. And then next, we're going to turn him around. We grab the tailpiece and fold it down horizontally, just like that. Then we're going to start to separate the cockpit, and we fold it up, snap it into place. And of course we're going to reach under here and fold out this little black tab, and get it pointed straight out. The next, we come down here to his legs. We're going to fold, shove the legs up to his hip. That one's a little stiff. I also need to fold his arms up onto the top of the head, onto the top of his back, and press them down up against it, like so. And then we take his legs and we're going to rotate them inward. 
just like this. Make sure they also chinch inside a little bit. Then we'll fold the tail all the way down. Fold out the landing gear so he has a way to stand. Then we take his rotor blade, unfurl it all the way out, and insert it like so. Probably not with that much force. And there you have it. Night Fright is a helicopter gunship. More specifically, he's the Russian Mi-24 helicopter gunship. And as you can see on there, he is loaded to bear. He has missiles along the sides of his wings and what would likely be a heavy machine gun here in the front. And of course, if he was the real version of the helicopter, he probably also was carrying a fair amount of troops on the inside. And of course, he looks kind of plain here. You'll see why here in just a moment. But you do have a working tail rotor. And as you can see, that's very thin plastic. And you do have this top rotor, which whirls okay. It's not perfect given the wonky design for it, because it folds up, so it does leave it a little less than impressive, but it's not bad. And it does hold very well in your hand, like such, so you can swoosh him about. Even though he's a helicopter, he doesn't swoosh, but you can easily hold him like this, one-handed, for shooting at ground targets. Alright, since he only has the one loose part, we'll just show it off right here as is. It's this five-bladed rotor. It's the only one of its kind in the GoBots line. And as you can also tell when we move it to the side, you can see the individual blades are very thin plastic. So they will stress wear easily. They will break easily. So please do handle it with care if this is one you are seeking out. But of course, if you can actually find one, you'll probably not be too picky about the condition of the blades. But to each their own, my friends. But I want you all to be aware of it. And of course, the biggest giveaway for it is it does have a tan base at the bottom. This is not to be confused with fellow Renegade Warpath's rotor blade, even though Warpath has a four-bladed rotor, and it's also in black. But at any rate, that is... Night Fright in his alternate mode and with his loose parts. Now, the reason I said earlier about how he looks kind of plain is due to the newness of the toy. Cause take a look right here, folks. Look at what I have. An unused sticker sheet. This is pure gold right here. So, yeah, I can admit he would probably look better with these on, but I kind of like him without them at the moment, especially when you consider how hard it is to find sticker sheets like this that are totally unused. This is beautiful. And as you can see down here, this would be the instructions as to where to place them on the helicopter mode. But as I said earlier, I kind of like him like this. Now, as you saw, if... For any of you who saw some of my previous Super GoBot videos, you would have known that any of them that they put instructions for, they put on the back of the box. Well, for the third and final wave of the Super GoBots, they actually included with them a set of paper instructions. Which just shows how to transform him, I mean convert him, excuse me. 
and just the basic other stuff that they would mention. Hmm, sounds like my mail just arrived. We'll check that in a moment. Now, of course, to go along with that as an added bonus, look right here, folks. We got the box as well. That was 300 bucks well, well spent. As you can see, differences on here from between him and between the toy and the box. They painted the fists for the original prototype, and they left the visor where his eyes are. A slightly different shade, which, that's not too bad. I don't know if the red fists would have done him any good, because like you see here on the helicopter mode they stand out so I don't think that would have went over very well of course the side art is the art on the side there is the same on both sides unlike in previous ones where on one side they would at least put the show off who all else is being released in that wave they put it on the back of the box which we'll take a look at that in a moment open up the flap here and they're still using the same artwork but Surprisingly, they are using the European artwork. This is European artwork. Due to this up here, this his hair fiend in his European colors, where he was uh, released in a light blue color instead of in the black color. But since the box doesn't list Machine Robo or Robo Machine, this is an American issued box. And then here's the stuff on the bottom, nothing really important. And back here on the back, you can see which Guardians and Renegades were available. This basically was also to help promote the new ones that were being released at the time. Rizor, Throttle, Spy Eye, and Super Cooper for the Guardians. Night Fright, Clutch, and Vamp for the Renegades. But, of course, to help compete with the Transformers, they now included a bio for the GoBot. So, it gives Night Fright's bio. Like a ghoul from a graveyard, Night Fright rises up to threaten every living thing. With an evil chuckle, he swoops down on his unsuspecting victims. Earthlings are so easy to terrify. The Guardians have their work cut out for them with this renegade. He's a frightening sight in the night. Seriously? Who wrote this stuff? Anyway, while well, it comes off as being a little weird and definitely very cheesy, it does paint the picture of Night Fright being something of a sadistic killer. So in many ways, Night Fright also tends to emulate some of the villains from 1980s horror. Since, let's face it, uh, that was the big rise in popularity for the slasher genre. Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees definitely haunted many of our nightmares back in the day. And in some ways, Night Fright tries to emulate that with the way his bio is written. And, of course, with him coming off as a helicopter gunship, he certainly is more than capable of backing that up. We're not going to go too much into the fact that he is obviously a Russian, or in this case, at the time he was released, a Soviet-made helicopter. So, he's got that going for him at the time, so that kind of makes him something of Cold War propaganda, inadvertently. But of course, they all, the GoBot line also had Gunnier, who was also who became a MiG jet fighter, which, of course, were the Soviet airplanes at the time. And of course, he was also a renegade. So again... Something of Cold War propaganda from the 1980s. But it's also countered by the fact that the Renegades also had Skyjack and Snoop, which both became, respectively, the F-14 Tomcat and the SR-71 Blackbird. Most notably, American jets. So, 
can't really t drag the Cold War propaganda into it entirely with that notion as well. For my thoughts on Night Fright, I certainly think he's a top-tier toy. He's got an impressive alternate mode, and that alone sells him for me. A heavy-hitting, high-attack gunship. So let's face it, as a Star Wars fan as well, I did love seeing the, Repu the Republic Lardy gunships that they used throughout the Clone Wars cartoons. And I kind of imagine them taking some design cues from Night Fright's alternate mode. And I think they would have been a wicked sight to see. Of course, a descendant of the MI-24 gunship was seen in the final moments of the Hitman, the original Hitman live-action movie. And I always thought that was a pretty wicked-looking chopper, certainly one that meant business if it's flying over, over in the skies. You know not to mess with this thing. So, I think Night Fright would carry that over as well as a GoBot. So, and I think the Renegade certainly could use some more tough guys that are genuinely tough. It's just unfortunate that Night Fright is a super rare toy. And I do feel sorry that not every GoBots fan is going to be able to acquire Night Fright. But even though he is a top-tier toy in my eyes, I would certainly like to see all the fans who want him to get him. But unfortunately, that is not going to necessarily be the case. And that concludes my review of the Renegade Gobot Night Fright. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up here on YouTube. Don't forget as well, hit that subscribe button down below and join up among Star Ranks. Please also consider sharing your thoughts about Night Fright in the comments section down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I'll catch you all later.